Good day, Great Walls. Today we'll be focusing on paper 2, the crisis of apartheid in the 1980s, internal resistance against reforms, as well as the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Both of these sections are source-based sections that we will be covering today. Great Walls, in front of you is the layout for paper 2. On the left-hand side, we have section A, source-based questions. Question 1, the crisis of apartheid in the 1980s, internal resistance against reforms. Question 2, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Question 3. Globalization. On the right hand side, we have Section B. Essay Questions. Number 4. The Challenge of Black Consciousness on the Apartheid State. Question 5. The Road to Democracy. Question 6. The Impact of Gorbachev's Reforms on the Soviet Union and South Africa. Please familiarize yourself with the layout of the paper because the questions and the numbering of the questions will not change. Question 1 to 3 will always be source based. And question 4 to 6 will always be essays. As I said, today we will be focusing on question 1 and question 2. Topic 4. Civil resistance South Africa 1970s to 1980s. Internal resistance. Question 1. Source based. The topic in front of us focuses on P.W. Waters reforms, which was the Tricameral Parliament and the Black Local Authorities Act. We will look at how Boita brought in these reforms to bring peace and calm to the country, but in actual fact, it caused the rise of internal resistance. In front of you are the main role players when it comes to internal resistance. You have the United Democratic Front, COSATU, the MDM, ECC, and the Black Sash. Now, any one of these can be asked as a source-based topic, so it is very important for you to understand and know your background information when going into this topic. Regardless of what source-based section you will be focusing on, it is important to always know your background information. In history, it's very important to know your timelines. In front of us, we see Boita's implementation of reforms to the apartheid state. We have the formation of the Black Local Authorities Act, which is introduced, which gives black urban communities the ability to elect their own councillors. In 1983, we also see the formation of the tricameral parliament, which constituted a seat for whites, coloreds and Indians only, and this was the result of the resistance. In 1983, we also see the formation of the United Democratic Front, and in front of you, we see the ECC, COSATU and Black Sash. Very importantly in history, know your timeline because it is a guideline for when events took place and when we undertake the source-based sections. History as a subject has its own unique language and it's very important that you get to know the language of the subject and also understanding your concepts because concepts are taught from grade 8 in high school all the way up to matric and there the different concepts are in front of you. It's important that you study it to prepare yourself for the exam session because any one of these concepts can be asked either as a definition or it can be discussed in the source. Today we will be focusing on internal resistance. In front of you is source 1b. It is important that you thoroughly go through the source, reading it from the beginning to the end, ensuring that you understand exactly what you are reading. The source in front of you focuses on the ECC, the End Conscription Campaign. And the questions that follow will be focused specifically on source 1 b source 1b questions define the term total strategy which is mentioned in the source this question define is a level one question it is also important for you to know your concepts as total strategy was one of the concepts that we discussed earlier in the powerpoint number two according to the source which characteristics did south african society have this too is a level one question Whenever you see according to the source, know that the answer comes directly from the source. We are not requiring you to give your own opinion, simply to quote from the source. Number three, comment on the following. Where brother is called to fight against brother in the context of South Africa in the 1980s. When we comment, we are simply giving our own opinion based on background information as well as information in the source. When you comment, it is no different to explaining something. Many times candidates think that 
To comment is different to explain or is more difficult than explaining. But we are actually asking you to simply elaborate by giving your own opinion. So comment and explain mean exactly the same thing. And they will always be level 2 questions. So remember, define is a level 1. According to the source is a level 1. Comment and explain are level 2 questions. After you have answered the questions, in front of you are the answers to source 1B's questions. Please go through it. Check your answers. Make sure that you have given the correct answer. When it comes to definitions, make sure that your definition is in line with what is expected of you. When it comes to quoting from the source according to the source, you will see by number two that we are asking for you to quote directly from the source. We do not want you to rewrite the entire source. We do not want you to rewrite the entire paragraph, but simply answer the question. By number three, when you were asked to comment, it is very important that you look at the last sentence, which says any relevant answer. Any relevant answer gives you the freedom to express yourself and to give your own opinion based on the question that was asked. Source 1C is a visual source that states stop the call up. But on the right hand side, very importantly, we have a description of the source. When studying visual sources, it is very important to read the description to get a better understanding of what is taking place in the source. The description gives the source context as well as meaning. The source also focuses on the end conscription campaign. It is important that you study the source, understand the source before you undertake the questions. Source 1C questions. Number 1. By which organization is the poster launched? This is a level 1 question because the answer is inside the source. Question 2. According to the source, what are the three colors of the band around the man's head? When we see according to the source, just a reminder that the answer is inside the source. This will always be a level 1 question. When we ask certain level 1 questions, we are asking you to basically identify what you see inside the source. We are testing a specific skill which we want to see whether you can extract and identify information within the source. Question 3. What message is being conveyed in the poster? Provide visual proof out of the source as motivation for your answer. This is a level 2 question because the question is asking you to analyze what message is being conveyed in the poster. Analyze and interpret. That's your first answer. Secondly, they ask you to provide proof to support your answer or to motivate your answer. You will see there on the right hand side, they expect two answers, which will give you four marks. Question four, how does sources B and C support each other concerning, concerning the South African army? In every question paper, you will find a comparative question that compares one source with another. We will either get a question that asks us how do they support each other or we will get a question that asks us how do they differ. When we look at support, we are looking at how are these two sources similar. What is being said in source 1 that is also being shown or said in source 2. So in this case, we are comparing sources B and sources C. Learners are expected to identify information in both sources that support each other. It is very important to give two comparisons for four marks. When giving one comparison, the candidate will only get two marks. Grade 12, please take some time to go through the answers. Compare the answers in front of you to the answers that you've written down. As you can see, question one is straight from the source as well as question two, which is straight from the source. 
Then we have question three, which was the comparative question, which requires you to identify information in source B as well as source C. Whenever you compare, make sure you make at least two comparisons because two comparisons will give you four marks. If you le make less than two comparisons, you will only get the two marks. Remember, a comparative question comes in every question paper. So you can go and you can practice these comparative questions. I would say in source B, they say something. And in source C, it supports it by saying the exact same thing or by depicting something similar. Remember, support means similar. If they ask you how do the sources differ, then you look at how they contradict each other. Finally, we can see that in question four, we have the comparative question. And as you look at the answers, it compares one C with one B and it states how they support each other, providing evidence in both sources. So remember, evidence should be provided from both sources to support your answer. In front of you, we have question two, which is the TRC. It is your second question in paper two. The question focus will be on the TRC. So in front of you, we have a mind map that gives you an idea of what the focus points can be and the focus areas can be of the TRC. Firstly, it's very important, as I said before, to know your background information so that you can have an understanding of the topic. And as we saw in the previous section now, that having a background information and having that foundation really assists us when it comes to answering our level two questions. So when we look at the TRC, we will be focusing on the reasons for the establishment of the TRC. We will be looking at the structure of the TRC, the Committee on the Violation of Human Rights, We'll be looking at the Rehabilitation Committee, Amnesty Committees, Public Hearings, the Award of Amnesty for Offenders, as well as Compensation for Victims. Then, a very important aspect of this topic is the debates for and against the TRC. And then we have the exemption of the report and evaluation and the work of the TRC. Remember, very importantly, that the reasons for the start of the TRC was to investigate human rights violations during apartheid. But not everybody was a supporter of the TRC, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, as certain people opposed it and as other people supported it. Great Wells, it is important to remember that every question has a key question. The key question is your guiding question and the key question offers the focus of the contents in the sources. It is also linked to the paragraph question, which is always at the end of your source based section. It is important that you make notes in each source on what you can include in the paragraph. Every source is marked. So if you are dealing with question one, it will be marked from one A to one D, or whether you're dealing with question two or question three, it will be marked accordingly. Remember that every source will be contextualized. What does that mean? That means that you cannot just read the source or look at the photograph or the visual source. It is important to read the source in context. Why? In the contextualization of the source, it indicates what the source is about. So we need to know the what. It indicates why it is written. So it is important to know the why. Who wrote it? Because that tells us whether the source is reliable. Then when it was written, dates also give us an understanding of reliability and most importantly, where the event took place. These are just some basics that you should know, you should understand before you answer or read through any sources. So in the previous section, we dealt with level one and level two questions. We discovered that level one questions, except for define, will always be inside the source. So they will either ask you to list, they can ask you to name, they can ask you to extract, to quote, or according to the source. But most importantly, we know that the answer is always inside the source. Now for this section, we'll be focusing on a couple of level three questions. In front of you, we have reliable. The following questions will help you answer a reliability question. What type of source is it? 
Secondly, is it a primary or a secondary source? We would like to know who wrote the source. When was it produced? The date. Why was it produced? The reason. Where was it produced? And all of these things make a source reliable or unreliable. Then we need to know if it is biased, one-sided, and also if the source has emotional language to it. Then when we look at reliability, what are we asking you? We are actually asking you, can we trust the source? In front of you are examples of whether we can trust the source or not. So when, is some, when something is a primary source, it is a first-hand account. The person was there when it took place. So that makes it reliable. But then again, we look at the bias. Who wrote it? Are they trying to paint a certain picture? So can we trust it? So whenever you are answering a reliability question, you are to state, yes, the source is reliable because and give your reasons or no, the source is not reliable because and give your reasons. It is also very important to always give two reasons. You do not get a mark for taking a stance. You get a mark for the evidence that supports your stance. Then one of my favorite questions for level three is the usefulness of a source. How useful is the source to a historian? So the following question will help you to answer a question on usefulness. What is the source saying to you? Is the source valid? Who produced the source? When was the source produced? We look at the aims of the, of the source. Is it facts or opinion or is it positive or negative? Does the source have bias? Is it one-sided? And do you agree with what the source is saying? Is it relevant? What is the source not showing us? So we look at the limitations of the source. And can the source be supported by other sources? One thing we pick up is that we will never put a source in an exam paper that you cannot use. Therefore, it is safe to say that the source is useful because, and you will give your two reasons. You are taking a huge risk if you are saying the source is not useful because you are already using it to answer other questions. So the source is useful because, and you give you a reason within the context of the question. I always make an example where I use an object and say, how useful is the pencil to a learner in the classroom? And the pencil is useful because you can write with a pencil. So simply, State what you see inside the source and what we can use regarding the question that is asked. As we jump back to reliability, it is important to remember that no source is 100% reliable. A source becomes more reliable if it was produced during a specific time period. Remember what I said that a primary source is mostly reliable because it is a first-hand account, meaning the person was there at the time, so therefore we can trust the account. Secondly, sources produced by people that were there at the time, as I stated now, are relevant. Then these sources will usually be biased also, because it is only one side of the story. But they show us how key role players experienced a specific event. So even though it is only one side of the story or one account, it still gives us very important information as the person was there. Sources written by historians are usually regarded as reliable, but always be aware of the context in which the source is written. Example, if the source is biased. So when coming to reliability, always look at who wrote the source. Great walls, please read the source in front of you. As you see, the source focuses on the Truth and the Reconciliation Commission. This is the case of Neil Agate. This is source 2A. The first sentence, as you see, is the contextualization of the source. Remember what I told you where I said it either gives you the who, the what, the where, and the when. So the extract below sets out the reasons for the, TRC, for the formation of the TRC. So it gives us the what, 
and it also gives us the who. The who is the TRC and the what is the reasons for the formation of the TRC. Please read through the source thoroughly and gain an understanding of what is being discussed. Source 2a questions. Number 1. Give two reasons stated in the source for the foundation of the TRC. This is a level 1 question. Why? Because it is asking you to state two reasons within the source. Level 1 questions, the answers are always inside the source. If you only state one reason, you will only get one mark. As you see, the mark allocation on the right hand side says 2 times 1, meaning you need to give two marks for your two marks. Number two, define the term amnesty in the context of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Once again, this is a concept and it's very important to know your concepts because we cannot lose marks if we do not have background information. Question three, list two organizations in the source that agreed to the founding of the TRC. This again is also a level one question because it asks you to list inside the source please read your questions carefully and try and identify certain words that will guide you with regards to questions and the levels of those questions then number four explain the usefulness of the source to a historian studying the truth and reconciliation commission when we see usefulness remember that is always a level three question but we know that the source is useful we just need to provide our reasons. So when we explain whether the source is useful to a historian studying the TRC, we need to keep it within context of the Truth and the Reconciliation Commission. So when we go back to the source, we need to look at what is mentioned about the Truth and the Reconciliation Commission. And those are, that is the evidence that supports our stance. We said the source is useful. And we need to give our reasons. Grade 12, in front of you are the answers to sources 2a, question 1, 2, and 3. Your answers for question 1 and your answers for question 3 come directly out of the source. Then question two was a definition of a concept that you should have known before the time. So make sure that you compare and that you mark your question, your answers accordingly. Then finally, we have the answer to question four, which was a usefulness question. And in the memo, it states the source is useful because, and it gives you multiple reasons why the source is useful to a historian studying the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Once again, at the bottom, we see it says any relevant response. So any response relating to the question will be accepted. Grade 12, take some time to read through source 2C. This is an extract from the Truth and Reconciliation Report in Volume 3 from pages 578 to 581 that details the TRC's findings regarding Neil Agard's death. Remember, the contextualization of the source is of the utmost importance because it tells us what the source is about, it tells us also who the important role players are, and it gives us an idea of what the questions could be that follows. Source 2 C Questions Number 1 what three reasons does Source 2C give us for why Neil Agate committed suicide? Once again, this is a level 1 question. You will see a similar theme with sources that it mainly starts with level 1 questions. Not all the time, but how do we know that it is a level 1 question? Because we can find the answer within the source. They tell us that the three reasons are within the source. Then by number 2, we see that it starts off with explain. And by now we know that explain makes us realize that it is a level 2 question. Whenever we see the term explain, we know that it is level 2. So the question states, explain why you think the TRC's findings regarding Neil Agate's death can be justified. So they are asking you once again for your own opinion. But then we see the word 
justified. This is why it's so important to know our subject terminology. Justified is once again, there is a common word used within the subject. So when they ask us, is it justified? They are asking, can their findings be supported with relevant evidence? Question three, what according to the source has led to a culture of impunity and serious human rights violations? Once again, question three is a level one. How do we know this? Because they ask us according to the source. And finally, our final question, and this is actually the, the last question of every source based section, you will get a paragraph. The paragraph question states, use the two sources and your own knowledge and write a paragraph of approximately eight lines in which you explain how the TRC handled the case of Neil Agate. Remember, as I said, every source based question ends off with a paragraph question of eight lines. Great Twelves, once again, I would like to alert you to the answers. Please check your answers. Make sure that you are following the right formula with regards to answering your level one and your level two questions compared to the memo in front of you and mark accordingly. And finally, I'd like to alert you to the final question, which was a paragraph question. In front of you, number four is the memo for that question. Most importantly, I want to discuss the paragraph with you. Remember that the paragraph, we are testing a skill. We are testing your ability to write a paragraph, not in point form. We are testing your ability to summarize. So if you look at the memo in front of us, you will see that the memo extracted important information that answers the question from each source. There is also evidence of your own knowledge that you provide. So you must be able to write a summary of about 80 words, eight lines, and it must be in paragraph form. The essay focus question will be the challenge of black consciousness to the apartheid state. It will always be question four of paper two. This is quite an enjoyable section in previous papers. It was a source based section. And since 2021, it has been an essay section. As you can see in front of us for paper two, we have section A source based questions and section B essay questions. The source based questions are number one, the crisis of apartheid in the 1980s, internal resistance against reforms. Number two, the truth and reconciliation commission. Number three, globalization. On the right hand side, we have the essay sections. Number four, the challenge of black consciousness on the apartheid state. This will be the section that we will be focusing on today. Number five, the road to democracy. Number six, the, the impact of Gorbachev's reforms on the Soviet Union and South Africa. This will always be the layout for paper two. So today we will be looking at various essay type questions. I'll be looking at how we will be able to answer these questions. And with regards to the challenge of black consciousness to the apartheid state, we'll be looking at how to develop a line of argument as well as how to sustain that argument and then to conclude. What we've discovered is that many times we find that learners regurgitate facts and there's nothing wrong with writing facts, but it's very important to have a line of argument and using the facts as evidence to support your argument. So what is the main focus areas that you should know when undertaking this essay? So the key content, the nature and aims of black consciousness, what did they aim to do? That is something you should understand and discuss. Then we have the role of Steve Biko, who was the most important role player. So we look at the role of Steve Biko with the emphasis on his ideas and his writings that inspired the movement that is the black consciousness. Then we have the black consciousness movement itself, what it was about, its philosophy, and understanding that the black consciousness movement was a movement, not a political organization. We also have the challenge posed by the ideas of black consciousness to the apartheid state. We have the 1976 Soweto uprising, briefly relating to the influence of the black consciousness movement on students and how it inspired students. Then finally, we have the legacy of black consciousness on South African politics. When writing your essay and looking at the facts that are provided, it is very important to know these key areas because these areas 
provide the evidence that supports your argument. When answering your essay question, it is very important to read the essay question, try and understand it, analyze it, and highlight the keywords that stand out to you. What must you emphasize in the essay? For example, the, the previous slide we discussed the main focus areas, such as the ideas of black consciousness, how it, how it opposed the apartheid state, the role of Steve Biko, and how it inspired the Soweto uprising and many other groups. Then we look at how it mobilized the people. What does it mean to mobilize? It means to bring them together. And we also emphasize different aspects to the question in the essay. Today, we will also be going through the Peel method, how to apply the Peel method in our essay and to sustain our line of argument. In front of us, we have our first type of essay question, and they ask you, do you agree? So, let's read through the question together. Pika and the Black Consciousness Movement was significant in South Africa's liberation struggle. This that I read right now is a statement that was made, and the question is, do you agree? Support your line of argument with relevant evidence. As you can see, the important aspects are highlighted, such as the significance as well as the liberation struggle. So how does the black consciousness movement have a significant impact on the liberation struggle? To your right we see we need to emphasize Steve Biko and his role. We need to emphasize the ideas of black consciousness and the liberation struggle throughout our essay. So that should be our main focus. But then also most importantly we need to take a stance with regards to our essay. So we need to state either we agree with the statement, either we partially agree with the statement, or we disagree with the statement. You need to decide. And most importantly, when you take a stance and answer the question, we need to sustain that throughout our entire essay. Great Wells in front of us is essay type two. So the question focuses on to the extent to what extent? So, follow with me. Explain to what extent the South African Students' Organization, SASO, played a role in conscientizing black South Africans in the 1970s. Then they ask you to support your line of argument with relevant evidence. Most importantly to focus on here is the question to what extent? Now, candidates, you need to decide whether it is to a greater extent or to a lesser extent. And then most importantly, when we look at the key words that are highlighted, to what extent, SASO, the role of black consciousness in conscientizing black South Africans. So all of these things you need to look at and be, be sure that you understand the question. Then what does it mean to conscientize, to make conscious, to be aware of, and then to act? And once you have taken a stance and decided to what extent, then you provide relevant evidence that supports your stance. Essay type 3, critically discuss. So we've looked at taking a stance, do we agree or disagree? Then secondly, we've looked at taking a stance to a greater extent or to a lesser extent. And then thirdly, they ask you to critically discuss. Now, do we take a stance when it comes to this question or do we discuss the topic in depth? Let's look at the question. Critically discuss how Steve Beaker and the philosophy of black consciousness mobilized black South Africans to challenge the apartheid government in the 1960s and 1970s. So what do we need to do here? We need to critically discuss. That means we just need to discuss all aspects, all merits and all faults. It is important for you to know the relevant facts that support your argument. Then secondly, when we look at the word mobilized, as I mentioned before, it's the act of organizing or preparing something such as a group of people. Then another key word that stands out in this question is the word challenge. What does the word challenge mean? It means to resist, to test and to protest against the government. So you need to look at Steve Biko, his role, as well as the philosophy of black consciousness that organized groups of people together and how this challenged the apartheid government in the 1960s and 1970s. 
Remember when it comes to your essay questions, it is important that number one, you answer the question and number two, you provide relevant facts and information. In slide three, we discussed the different, or slide five, we discussed the different main focus areas when it comes to the topic of black consciousness. So great was, did you notice that all the questions had a similar trend? It focuses on the significance of black consciousness, the role that it played, as well as how it mobilized people to come together. Then it lends itself to examining the impact and effect of black consciousness as a challenge to the apartheid state. So we see a similar trend and we see a similar theme when it comes to the types of questions that are asked. It is important for you to know your philosophy. It is important for you to, to know the main role players. It is important to know what impact the philosophy had on different organizations. So when we look at the critically discussed question, we're going to look at the introduction and how to answer this question. Once again, I'm going to read through the, the question with you. Critically discuss how Steve Biko and the philosophy of black consciousness mobilized black South Africans to challenge the apartheid government in the 1960s and 1970s. On our right hand side of the screen, we see the answer, the introduction that we have written. Biko and the philosophy of black consciousness played an important role in mobilizing black South Africans under the umbrella of black consciousness organizations. Inspired to act, black South Africans protested and challenged the apartheid regime in the 1960s and 1970s. Most importantly, when looking at the answer here, we can see that we took the question and we converted it into an answer. Certain words that stand out is the fact that we use the word mobilize once again. And we said, we took a stance where it said it played an important role. Then from inspired, we start to use our own argument based on the evidence that we have had available. They were inspired to act and black South Africans protested and challenged the apartheid regime in the 1960s and 1970s. Very importantly, grade 12s, when answering your essay question, specifically your introduction, do not deviate away from the essay question. Use the essay question to guide you in terms of formulating your introduction. At the bottom, when it comes to an introduction checklist, they ask you, is there a stance, a point in relation to the question that you have made? So at all times, you still need to make a point whether they ask you to agree or disagree or to what extent you must agree or not. Then secondly, there must always be an explanation that supports the stance or point that you made. Thirdly, I have established my line of argument. So the line of argument here is, is that the philosophy of black consciousness played an important role in mobilizing black South Africans. That was the point that I made. That was the argument that I made. Now I need to sustain that argument straight throughout my essay. Then finally, after reading the introduction, the marker will have a good sense of what to expect. So when I read your essay, I will then see that throughout your entire essay, you will focus on how the philosophy played a, a major role in, in mobilizing black South Africans. Great Walls, it is of the utmost importance that you understand the philosophy of black consciousness because it really lays the foundation for your argument when it comes to your essay question. Now, as you can see on the screen, as you write, emphasize that black South Africans became conscious or aware of the philosophy of black consciousness and how this mobilized them. So when we look at the philosophy, we look at what happened prior to the establishment of this philosophy. What is a philosophy? It is an idea. So before this idea arose, racism in South Africa caused psychological damage upon people. And <clears throat> it resulted in them feeling extremely in fear. Inferior, inferiority meaning less than. So ideas of black consciousness wanted to regain pride and humanity in, in black South Africans. So black people must celebrate their identity and their culture. 
they must become self-reliant and they must create their own destinies so they must be self-reliant believe in themselves so through your line of argument emphasize examples of action and mobilization so when we write this essay we are focusing on how the philosophy of black consciousness really inspired the black people to believe in themselves to be proud of themselves and to really formulate their own identity and their own culture and therefore that impacting different organizations to mobilize and come together and really oppose the apartheid state let's get into the background information that we should understand before answering the question we must understand that at the time it was apartheid and many political organizations were banned so there was a political vacuum the anc was banned the pac was banned and many of their leaders were either banned or in exile or in prison so if you opposed the apartheid government at the time you would be regarded as a terrorist so this is really the background information we need to understand when answering this question remember i always tell you that facts don't change mobilization of blacks so it was important at the time because there was no political support for black south africans that they developed a new philosophy and this gives rise to the philosophy of black consciousness which infused blacks with a sense of pride to accept themselves to love themselves to have self-confidence self-reliance and self-identity it empowered blacks to reject the spirit of self-pity inferiority complex self-alienation and domination the apartheid government had a so the apartheid philosophy had a psychological impact on the thoughts and minds of black south africans where they really felt oppressed by the system so it was necessary that the intervention would be a philosophy that inspired them and empowered them to believe that anything was possible that they could stand up for themselves the formation of black consciousness was welcomed by the apartheid government as an extension of a separate development the apartheid government seeing it as a separate development made them believe that it would not have an impact on the way the country was run and they did not realize that it would generate opposition political mobilization so the black consciousness movement mobilized various groups black students started to organize themselves to resist white domination by breaking away from new sas which was a multiracial organization and they formed sasa the south african students organization black students adopted the philosophy of black consciousness black consciousness also led to the form formation of the black people's convention in 1972 which involved students churches communities and trade unions here we can specifically see the impact of the philosophy of black consciousness on different organizations unions also began to align themselves with the black consciousness philosophy the south african student movement was formed in 1972 and exposed school students to black consciousness ideals so this is where the soweto uprising comes in but many of these students became expelled from universities and this heightened the political activism student mobilization sasa and sasm influenced the formation of soweto student representative council teachers and learners were already exposed to the ideas of steve beaker and the philosophy of black consciousness through sasa student teachers from universities the departmental circle in afrikaans the language of the oppressor which stated that all subjects will be done in afrikaans was a trigger for the soweto uprising keep in mind that the black consciousness movement inspired so many different organizations and so many different sub movements so when we look at the soweto uprising it really inspired the students and teachers to stand up and and oppose the apartheid government and the department for the circular on afrikaans This led to the Soweto uprising on 16th of June 1976 where students protested peacefully against the implementation of the circular. Unfortunately, police responded with violence and many of these students were attacked and shot. Namely, Hector Peterson. Mobilization through community programs. So here we look at how black consciousness had an influence on the formation of different community programs. Biko's banishment to King Williamstown led to diverted focus to community programs. Black consciousness promoted independence from whites through black community programs to support blacks without 
white assistance. This once again ties in with the philosophy of black consciousness, which told blacks to be self-reliant and to believe in themselves. It also separated them from the white population as it was a movement specifically for black people. Black being those that fell under the umbrella, those that fell under the umbrella of black were Indians, coloreds, and African blacks. Examples of these community programs were the Zanimpilo Health Clinic and the Ginsburg Educational Trust. When looking at this section, also have a look at how it mobilized the labor force how it mobilized workers and trade unions. Then also we look at the government's response, the killing of Steve Biko and him being held in custody. Then we also look at mobilization through the media and what the role the media played. So when discussing the evidence and providing evidence, ensure that you touch on all areas regardless of the question that is asked. We are now gonna have a look at the Peel method when it comes to using the evidence to support our line of argument. So there are really four steps that you need when it comes to writing your paragraphs. The first step is making a point. So in the first sentence, the opening sentence of a paragraph must make a clear statement or point. This point is based on your knowledge and your stance that you've taken in the beginning of your essay. Secondly, you will then explain. The next sentence in your paragraph should explain the point you have just made, but you should use evidence to support it. Thirdly, you provide evidence. The next few sentences should give evidence, facts to substantiate or support the statement or point you have made. Fourth, you will then link it back to your essay question. At the end of your paragraph, you must link back to the essay question or forward to the next paragraph. The Peel method is a very effective method when it comes to writing paragraphs because the first sentence, as I said before, is a point and a statement that you make regarding the stance that you took at the beginning of your essay. Then you will explain the stance or the point you have made and then you will provide relevant evidence to support your answer. Then finally, you will link it right back to the essay question. So the idea is to try and use this in the body of your essay with every single paragraph. Remember, essays are not just about writing facts, but it's also about sustaining a line of argument. And as you can see, it's very important to introduce a line of argument at the beginning and the end of your paragraph. Let us go through an example of a paragraph where the Peel method was used. So this paragraph focuses on the Soweto uprising. As you can see, the first sentence was the point that was made that comes from my own opinion based on the question that was asked. The South African student movement established in 1973 was influenced by the black consciousness ideas and philosophies. That is the point that I'm making to open up and start my paragraph. I then provide evidence to support my answer and I explain my point. So the South African student movement produced a militant newspaper called Thrust to spread the ideas of black consciousness and they were actively involved in mobilizing the youth. Although the 1975 directive by the Minister of Bante Education caused widespread opposition, other factors such as the general inferior, inferior nature of Bante Education and the poor living conditions in the township co compounded the feelings of dissatisfaction. The center of our paragraph is therefore an explanation and evidence that we have provided from the facts. Remember, facts do not change. So the idea is not to change the facts, but to use the facts to support our argument. Then we introduce at the end our link to our original question. By 1976, the leaders of the South African student movement were able to direct the youth to challenge the apartheid government, to create their own destiny and liberate South Africa. The Soweto uprising was the largest incident of civil protest in the history of the anti-apartheid movement. This is an effective method when writing a paragraph for the body of your essay. So we, as we are almost drawing to a conclusion of our session, I want you to become aware of certain things. Most essays address the questions around what happened, who was involved and when it happened. But good essays address the questions around why it happened and how it happened. So the best essays address the questions around the impact and the results. So remember, when writing an essay, it is important to find a balance between having a, a line of argument, sustaining that line of argument from the beginning till the end, 
as well as providing relevant evidence that supports your line of argument. And finally, our conclusion. The question once again was, critically discuss how Steve Biko and the philosophy of black consciousness mobilized black South Africans to challenge the apartheid government in the 1960s and 1970s. Below is our conclusion. As you can see, we have used the question to formulate our conclusion. We have touched once again on the question being asked as well as taken a stance. Therefore, one can conclude that Biko and the philosophy of black consciousness played an important role in mobilizing black South Africans under an umbrella of black consciousness organizations. It was evident that black South Africans protested and challenged the apartheid regime in the 1960s and the 1970s. Once again, we are using the question to conclude our essay. We are not simply making up our own words and this is also a very easy method as the question guides you in terms of you once again answering and reinforcing your line of argument. Great Wows, I hope you enjoyed today's essay section. I hope you enjoyed the discussions and I hope you learned something new. Remember that for your introduction there is a formula, for your paragraphs there is a formula and for your conclusion. Please go through these slides again and practice it. Practice, practice, practice and all of the best for your finals. Have a great day.